Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be demoing a game which teaches basic economics. Hi, my name is Conrad Barsky. I'm a computer programmer, a medical doctor. If you've ever heard of me, which is unlikely, it would be because of one of my programming books like Land of Lisp. Um, so I had this idea for how you could build an economics game which teaches basic economics and could be part of an economics curriculum. Now, if you're an economics professor and you find this video uh, compelling, please get in touch and let's turn this into a full curriculum. So let me first talk about the rationale. Uh, what is it that we want to teach in a basic economics class? I'm not an economist, so take everything I say here with a grain of salt, but I would say there's three main things we want to teach. First, we want to help people build intuitions for how incentives affect behavior. This is essentially the cardinal rule of all of economics. The second thing we want to do is teach people basic economics vocabulary so that after the class, if they read a story with economics content, they understand terms like comparative advantage or money supply or any of these sorts of things. Now, the third thing we want to teach is mathematical models in economics reduce ambiguity. And uh, I want to focus on this because usually we think of mathematical models as a research tool in economics. And what I'm going to show you now is an economics simulation that I've created, which is specific for education. So it's an, an education focused uh, economic model. It's called Econ Isle. We're simulating the economy of a Stone Age island. It has three uh, essential properties. First of all, it is simple, and I'm going to get into more of that in a second. Second of all, it is rich enough to teach all the important core economic concepts. Third of all, it is fun, or at least as fun as anything can be in a classroom context. So let's take a look at the simulation. So it's pretty straightforward. Here is the island. Uh, now I have some pretty crude placeholder graphics right now showing the, the cave people, there's 40 of them, moving around the island uh, going about their day. We can see over here uh, what action each caveman is doing. With a, Each caveman has a silly cave person name. And now let me talk a little bit about the details of the economic model. Every day, every cave person on this island performs one of four actions. First, they work, which involves accumulating a resource of some sort. Second of all, they trade that resource on a uh, open market in the middle of the island. Third of all, they eat. And fourth, they sleep uh, until the next day. So every caveman does these four things every day. Now, let's talk about the national dish of uh, Econ Isle. It's the mammoth burger. And uh, uh, to make a mammoth burger, you need one unit of four different resources, ketchup, lettuce, mammoth, and bread. So uh, if you want to eat in the evening, you better have at least one of each of these in order to make one or more mammoth burgers. Now, um, at the beginning of the uh, simulation, all 40 cave persons are born. And uh, at birth, they have an aptitude for one of the four professions, which is hunting mammoth, farming lettuce or bread, or gathering ketchup. Now, the hardest resource to acquire is mammoth. Mammoth hunting is difficult. So we ro just roll a die from one to eight for each uh, baby cave person to decide what their aptitude is for that. And, and uh, whatever number they get, that's how many units of that resource they can gather on a single workday. Now, the uh, easiest thing to do on the island is to gather ketchup. On this island, ketchup just bubbles up out of the ground. So we roll a die from 1 to 16 for every cave person. So there are going to be a few cave people on this island that are extremely good at gathering uh, lots of resources of ketchup every day. Now, there's two interesting people on this island. One is Elon Tusk, who is an inventor, and we'll talk about him later. And the other one is King Fred, who is essentially the government of the island. Now, one important role of the government is to supply money for the cave people. Uh, on this island, there are 40 citizens and there's uh, a, a thousand shells in circulation. Shells are the currency on this island per citizen. So that means there's a, a fixed 
money supply of 40,000 shells at all times. Now just to make things a little easier, I'm going to refer to these as dollars throughout the rest of the simulation. Now, how does selling things on the market work? Very simple. Um, people at the end of their workday gather their resources, they go to the market, and whatever they don't need, they will sell on the market. They will increase or decrease their price on the next day, depending on what happens during the uh, market selling day. So if they have a surplus of resources left over at the end of the day, they will lower their price by 5% the next day. So if you have lettuce left at the end of the day, the next day you drop the price by dollar from 20 to 19 to uh, hopefully sell more lettuce the next day. If there's no surplus, the cave persons will raise the prices. So in this case, uh, from 20 to 21. All the cave people have complete information uh, as to all the markets on this island. Now, as, we, as you can see here, we have some graphs that uh, show us uh, what's happening in the market every day. So um, you can see right now throughout the day, the um, price of mammoth is around $260 uh, per unit of uh, mammoth uh, resource. And you can see that the other resources are a lot less expensive and the cheapest is ketchup. And the reason for this, of course, is that there's a larger supply of ketchup because it's e easier to gather ketchup than it is mammoth. So mammoth is the most expensive resource on the island. Down here, you can also see the total number of burgers consumed per day on the island, which fluctuates right now around 60 or so. So that means each uh, cave person eats about one and a half mammoth burgers at the end of the day. Um, now, of course, that can vary. It could be you know one burger or two burgers. It's always a an integer number of burgers, or it could be zero burgers or more burgers. Uh, and I should explain, by the way, that um, if you are a computer programmer now, you actually have the full information you need to uh, build this simulation uh, uh, yourself. Uh, that's how simple the, this economic model is. Just understanding the, the daily routine, understanding how the prices are adjusted day to day, and how the aptitude for uh, uh, gathering resources has, is assigned to each cave person that uh, that gives you all the information you need to build this full simulation. You know, maybe you would think it doesn't matter in an educational context, but we're moving into an era now where computer programming is part of every profession. So the idea of having students in a class having to write a simple program to run this exact simulation uh, that they can use for running experiments, I think would be a really valuable thing to have in a basic economics curriculum. The more interesting thing is if we now make changes to the island economy and see how that affects the, uh, the uh, various uh, statistics uh, on this island. Let's uh, run a scenario on this island. So it turns out that uh, a lot of the citizens have been complaining to King Fred about the high cost of mammoth. So 260 bucks per unit of mammoth is a lot of money. So King Fred has an idea. What if we put in place price fixing and we say that nobody is allowed to sell mammoth for more than $120 per resource? So let's start the, this price fixing scenario right now. And I'm gonna speed up the simulation so that we can see what happens. And you can see that immediately after the government institutes price fixing, the price of mammoth drops to 120 per day. Now we can ask a question. So if we look at how many burgers are consumed on the island, this is kind of a substitute for what we think of as GDP or happiness of uh, the citizens. And we can now say, did, will the happiness go up or down if uh, we institute price fixing? And as we can see, immediately the uh, amount of uh, mammoth burgers consumed by the population craters uh, after the price fixing is instituted. And so this is a common idea in economics that if you have price fixing, it will have a negative impact on the economy. And of course, th that is only the case with this specific model that we've uh, created here. But now we can start that conversation saying, okay, what are the different types of models that are possible? And when would price fixing perhaps be uh, something that you could do, but at least with this basic model, it does not seem to have the desired effect. All right, let's look at another scenario. I'll stop price fixing, and we'll. And uh, after I stop the price fixing, you can see that the uh, price of mammoth is starting to go up quickly, 
And we can see also that the amount of mammoth burgers consumed goes up quickly. Uh, and I should point out, this is why economists like free markets also explains the concept of comparative advantage, right? Because there may be a person who is really good at gathering ketchup and they're only a middling uh, mammoth hunter. But if the price of mammoth is high, they may still opt to hunt mammoth instead. That's what we want in, an, in a flexible economy is we want people to, um, uh, we want a lot of people to uh, perform tasks that are difficult and have high economic value. And that's what a, an open market uh, helps us to do. Now let's look at another scenario. Um, Elon Tusk just uh, invented a new device. It's a ketchup vacuum. And with this, he can gather 120 uh, ketchup resources in a single day. Now, King Fred is very upset at this because he knows the poorest people on the island are the ones that gather ketchup. Elon Tusk is uh, putting them out of a job. Is that, a, that, that should be a bad thing, right? So let's see what happens if we um, let Elon Tusk use his ketchup vacuum on the island. So we now have this rule, this uh, scenario rule uh, in the program. And we can see immediately the price of ketchup starts dropping. Now the question is, uh, if the price of ketchup drops, does that also mean that the uh, total number of burgers is going to drop because all these people, all these ketchup gatherers are now out of a job? Well, what we find instead is that uh, more burgers are being consumed because with the cheap price of ketchup, uh, that helps everybody, even the poor people on the island. And we're now uh, averaging about 80 uh, mammoth burgers per day consumed instead of just 60. So now we can uh, talk about how creative destruction in an economy can help um, everybody, uh, even those who get displaced. And of course, you could argue that, that, that this model is wrong. You could, you could argue that um, there's job retraining necessary for the ketchup gatherers into other professions and that the model should take that into account. And we could add something like that to this model and see how that uh, impacts uh, our numbers. Anyway, this is the, the basic simulation and there's a lot you could do uh, to teach a lot of different concepts with this. So just some ideas is uh, we could talk about Gini coefficients. So yes, maybe with uh, creative destruction and innovation, the richer get richer, but maybe uh, there's just more inequality and the poor do not benefit from the uh, extra innovation. How would we measure that? So we could run all those kinds of experiments and, and, and do the math for that. We can talk about job retraining. We can talk about inflation. We can talk about deflation. We can talk about immigration from other islands. We could talk about UBI. We could talk about free trade between islands. We could talk about uh, how does taxation affect the GDP on the island. We could talk about uh, instituting a minimum wage and see what happens. We could implement banks and see how that would work, uh, how savings would work in this type of environment. We could uh, have people on the island have a, a concept of future discounting and see what happens with that. Uh, we could have the, an idea of uh, having substitute goods and see how that affects the island. Um, so yeah, this is the basic idea. It's still a very unfinished product. If you're an economics professor and you find this interesting, please get in touch and let's uh, build this into something cool. Thank you.